Jeffrey Lewis's career as a composer started in the mid-1960s while he was still a student at Cardiff University. Two orchestral pieces, Fanfares with Variations and the Chamber Concerto were given in workshop performances by the BBC Welsh Orchestra conducted by John Carew. In 1967, his trio for flute, oboe and piano earned him a travel bursary, the first of its kind awarded by the Welsh Arts Council, and this enabled him to study abroad in Poland and at Darmstadt. Geoffrey Lewis has been commissioned and performed by many of Britain's leading musicians and ensembles, and choral music has played an increasingly important part in his extensive work list. Jeff, choral music and choirs were an important part of your musical upbringing, weren't they? Yes, they were, because um, I was very fortunate with living near a church, the, the parish church in Aberavon in Port Albert, which was about 200 yards from where I lived, uh, that there was a very good choir and a very good organist. So I joined the choir when I was about eight, um, and there were quite a large number of boys in the choir and men as well. Um, then when my voice broke, uh, I joined the men and sang as a bass. Uh, even more importantly, in some respects, uh, at, at the age of about 12, I started learning the organ. Um, the organist was Colin Jones, who had had organ lessons with Herbert Sumption at Gloucester Cathedral. So he was a very good musician, had obviously been very well taught, played a very interesting range of music, so the musical conditions in the church were, were very impressive and obviously I benefited both in terms of my general musical uh, skills but particularly because in my contact with choral music. Looking at your early scores, the pieces that you wrote when you were a student at Cardiff, it seems that you found your voice as a composer early on. How would you characterise your style, say, in the pieces that you wrote for the Cheltenham Festival in 1967? I was very fortunate on the one hand to have very good performers perform my music and uh, there was a very good uh, environment at Cardiff in terms of musical performance. Lots of very gifted performers who went on to do very well, so it was an ideal situation. Now, two of the pieces that I wrote at that time, the two cadenzas, and the Epitaphium, Children of the Sun, which were written um, and performed at the Cheltenham Festival. I think that what would characterize the pieces was a degree of precision in terms of the harmonic writing, the color, uh, the melodic writing. And that would apply equally to Epitaphium, Children of the Sun, but because that piece had a text and a small chamber choir, and various new things came up in, in that piece, particularly the ending of the piece where it had what I call a rotating chord sequence. So quite a ritualistic ending for the piece, which became a characteristic of many pieces later on in my career. You studied with some eminent composers, Ligatine Stockhausen at Darmstadt, for example. Uh, but it seems to me that your studies in Poland uh, were more significant in crystallising the elements already present in your music? At that time in the mid to late 60s, there'd been what you might call an explosion of new music in Poland. It seemed to be the place where a lot of very interesting things were happening. And I became aware of the composer Bogusław Schäfer, who could be described as a bit of a maverick, um, a very influential figure in many respects, taught a lot of composers, but very, very unusual. Also, really, in a sense, one of the first avant-garde Polish composers who'd written lots of um, almost aleatoric pieces. Now, I worked with him on a regular basis, and he had uh, a great concentration on precision, of putting down exactly what you meant, also in terms of colour, variety, contrast, um, never doing the same thing um, over and over again. And he was very challenging and a very stimulating person to work with. And some of your vocal music from this period uh, presents performers with fairly stiff challenges. I'm thinking of your choral piece, Gwela Digaith, and the vocal writing in Mobiles 1 and 3. Were you writing with particular performers in mind? With Gwela Digaith, very much so, because when I became a student at 
Cardiff University, there was the student-run Palestrina Choir, first of all conducted by Peter James, and then conducted by David Evans. And I was asked to write a piece, I think it was uh, asked to write a piece using a Welsh text, which I did use, a piece called Gwela Digaith, for choir and soprano melodica, which David Evans conducted. Now, I think I was quite adventurous in that piece, quite demanding, uh, but the choir was very good, and of course David Evans is a very good conductor indeed, so I, I had no concern about the potential of the conductor and the choir to be able to perform the piece. Then, in, with Mobile One and Mo Mobile Three, they were rather different cases. Mobile One was a sort of instrumental writing for voices, four-part choir, really, uh, and Mobile Three was for a solo voice and a mixed ensemble. But there were three very different pieces, but uh, obviously making use of various vocal techniques. Back in the UK, you took up a lecturing post at Leeds College of Music. Tell me about that period in your life. I came back from Poland in the summer of 1968 and then the lecturing post came up at the Leeds College of Music. I applied for it and I got the post and I started in Leeds in January 1969. Now, the first interesting point about the college was that it had two courses. It had a foundation course and it had a jazz course. So. What was very interesting for me was that there were a lot of very skilled performers, very skilled performers on the jazz course, lots of very good brass players, percussion players, especially tuned percussion players, and equally very good performers on the foundation course. So that was a vibrant scene for me. I started a new music group, did a lot of new music there, uh, did an early performance of Terry Riley's In C. Uh, did a couple of performances of Sati's Vexations, one of them lasting 24 hours. So the point being was that this, for me, was a very exciting, active new music scene. There were some very gifted students there, very gifted part-time students, and it enabled me to have an experimental music group as an evening class with, as I say, very interesting, very creative performers. So. That was a, a period for me of, of great musical activity, exciting musical activity, in conjunction, a lot of it, with the art college. And also, of course, it was very useful for me in terms of my own composition. One thing about the Leeds period was that not only were you being commissioned by highly skilled professionals, but you were also working on a daily basis with gifted students and amateur musicians as well. This must have had an effect on the way that you were composing. It goes back to uh, a certain degree to what I just mentioned a moment ago because of a very thriving, active musical environment. They're a very supportive environment. And that for me was, in a sense, a very hands-on experience because I learned a lot by performing with the students, but also I learned a lot by the creative sessions we had. I mean, very often we'd have improvisation groups and at that time, Cornelius Cardew uh, had produced a series of pieces, The Great Learning, uh, divided into paragraphs. And we did two of those uh, in conjunction with the Art College. And in fact, Cornelius Cardew and John Tilbury came to the college and we worked on those pieces together. So that was a very different approach for me in terms of call singing, because two of those paragraphs involved choruses uh, and also, of course, it was yet again an extension in terms of my own musical activity. From Leeds back to Wales, but this time the North. In 1973, you moved to Bangor and took up a teaching post at the university. All the while, you were receiving commissions for orchestral, instrumental and chamber works. Tell me about that period. When I came back to Wales in 1973, I started at Bangor at the university in January 1973. And obviously there had been commissions uh, for music to be done in Wales by the Welsh Arts Council. But it just so happened that that year the, a lot more commissions occurred. And from that point on, so for quite a while I had regular commissions for uh, ensemble pieces, orchestral pieces, um, a couple of commissions from the BBC for orchestral pieces. So that was quite an active period in terms of 
spending a lot more time on writing my own music. And plus the fact, of course, obviously, of performances and broadcasts, and particularly that an orchestral piece I wrote in 1978 called Memoria, its first performance was actually broadcast live on a Saturday evening on Radio 3, which of course would be quite, well, fairly unusual now. Around 1978, your music seems to change direction, at least harmonically speaking. It becomes more consonant, often modal in style. Where did that come from? There was a build-up through the previous years, obviously, in terms of the music that I was in contact with. Um, obviously, there had been my student days at Cardiff, my study abroad, uh, and then, of course, the activity in Leeds. And that led on to consider the nature of my musical language. And the piece, really, that we're talking about is the orchestral piece, Memoria. And that's the piece, of course, that you're referring to in terms of, of the modal writing in the piece and the consonant harmony. Uh, of course, there was a specific reason for that piece, because that piece was written in memory of my mother. It was written shortly after she died, and the performance was about three months, four months later, it was performed by the BBC Welsh Orchestra. So that was part of the background to that piece, but there had always been modal writing in my music, used in quite complex ways, but also in quite simple ways. So it wasn't that I was changing gear in terms of my compositional direction. Moving forward to 1981, you received two commissions for vocal pieces for very different ensembles, Pro Pace for Electric Phoenix and Carmen Pascale for the University College Singers in Bangor. What were the challenges writing for two very different ensembles? Carmen Pascale was written, of course, for the University College Singers, the chamber choir in the University in Bangor. A very good choir with quite a range of music that they'd performed. Now, when I wrote that piece, I didn't feel I should limit myself equally, of course, I wasn't going to extreme lengths, but I wrote the piece that I wanted to write. And so there were, um, for want of a better description, certain free bars in the, the piece, whereby obviously the singers had to listen to each other very carefully. Uh, but I was very pleased with that piece and the performance it received by the Chamber Choir was a very good performance, and of course I've had very good performances since of the piece um, with the BBC singers. Now, the text for that came from the medieval Latin lyrics translated by Helen Waddell, which fairly early on I came across, and to me it seemed a treasure trove of texts to set to music. I've always had and still continue to have a great interest in setting the text in Latin for all the obvious reasons. Pro Pace was written for a group of four, four solo singers and electronics, and because the four singers were very well known singers, I was very well aware of their work, and I had heard them sing as a group. Um, that piece, uh, I assembled a series of texts from various sources, some of the texts. I went back to the Cheltenham piece written when I was a student, Epitaphium, some of the texts I used from that as well. So it was a sort of assemblage of texts uh, under the heading, obviously, Pro Pace for Peace. So having had the challenge of writing pieces for two very different ensembles, rather different circumstances, uh, I was very satisfied with the outcomes of those pieces. And for me, again, it was another learning experience in terms of the interest in setting texts and having the challenge of writing vocal music and, of course, particularly choral music. Two of your choral pieces from the mid-1980s have a Cardiff connection, don't they? Yes, they do. They were two pieces commissioned by Roy Harvard, who'd been a fellow student at Cardiff and as part of his work where he had various weekend groups and evening classes, he had a, a small choir called the Cardiff Motet Singers. So they commissioned me to write two vocal pieces, which were, were published by Novello. Um, the first one was Hymnus Antisomnum. Um, and in fact, the first performance of that piece was done by George Guest 
with the choir of St. John's College, Cambridge. Um, then the second piece was another text from the medieval Latin lyrics, Sequencia de Sancta Michaele, Sequence for St. Michael. Um, a rather more challenging piece in some ways, but for me the interest in Hymnus Antisomnum was the structure of the piece, which is a basic verse refrain structure. Uh, and that, I think, for my own concerns, worked well. And it seemed to me a very useful technique in terms of structuring choral pieces uh, in the future. So it's something that I've returned to occasionally. <laughs>